So welcome to the Bernard Alvarez webcast, where I do my best to share some consciousness, magic, empowerment, and uh, some other leaders in the field of consciousness every week here on my Facebook page as well as my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be discussing consciousness as a superpower. Uh, and this is not necessarily a class, but what it is is an amalgamation of a lot of the questions that I've been receiving and I haven't had the opportunity to answer or get to either on my page or my channel. So a lot of them have the same, same foundational topic to them. And as I was reading through them, it just kind of hit me that it's just a matter of us looking at our consciousness as our superpower. It is our superpower, if you think about it. So what is consciousness? We throw that word, we throw that word around quite a bit. And uh, though I've covered it extensively in years past, I'll do a quick idea of what I consider consciousness to be. Uh, for me, it is about the experience, and I believe I posted something to that effect this afternoon. Uh, whatever you are experiencing, you are conscious of, whether actually you may not even be conscious that you're experiencing it sometimes. Uh, and that's what this show is all about, hopefully to teach you to become more aware of that. But I talk about, in the past I have talked about how, uh, what we expose our senses to, whether we're looking at something, whether we're hearing something, whether we're tasting something or feeling something or thinking something, that is a matter of our consciousness. When we are looking at something, that becomes our consciousness for that moment. When we are feeling something, we are feeling that as our consciousness for that moment. There is consciousness, there's daily waking consciousness, and there is unconscious and or uh, sleeping consciousness. Uh, I talk about that in the form of automatic pilot, when we kind of lose, I don't want to say lose control, but we kind of step back and let our consciousness have fun, like in our dreams, or as a matter of fact, um, our automatic pilot, where a good example of automatic pilot would be uh, the way you tied your shoes this morning, did you put on your left shoe first or your right shoe first? Do you even think about it? Or are you an automatic pilot? The way you drive to work, do you think about it consciously or are you on automatic pilot? So there are different levels of consciousness. Now, one of the things that I, I came to realize as I was developing today's webcast, uh, reading through all of your questions that I've received over the last several weeks is that most of what we consider, what we consider perhaps different topics. Uh, for example, some of the questions today that I'm gonna be talking about are relationships, um, our place in the universe, what happens when we die, what is mysticism, and they all have to deal with consciousness, but we don't give it, we don't attribute it to that for some reason. Uh, whether you're into shamanism or paganism or meditation or uh, political activism or daycare, it's all about consciousness. What are you giving your attention to and what is your reality for that particular moment? Our reality changes hundreds of times every day. You know, uh, I, I try not, when I'm doing these webcasts, I try to keep them as professional as possible. I, I have to share this, that um, today I got called I don't know, a, a racist basher. <laughs> and it was because I laughed at something. I don't know if you're all on my page or reading that discussion. I've, I've already stopped looking at it. But um, I just thought it was funny. You know, I thought it was funny that this post said something about, you know, there are really no white people in the Bible and white supremacists try to say that the Bible is what gives them the right to be supreme or whatnot. Anyway, I just thought it was funny. It tickled my funny bone. And sometimes comedy in, and laughing at the sad parts of our lives is a part of our consciousness. Sometimes it's a way that we deal with the painful aspects of our world and our lives. Comedy can be very healing, but that's only one aspect of who we are. Whether it is your humor, whether it is your self-discipline, whether it is the way you act 
in relationships or whether it is the way you are as a professional in your job or your calling. These are all different levels of consciousness and they change throughout the day. We are not the same thing all day long. And for us to believe that we need to be this perfect idea of spiritually focused all the time is inhuman. I'm here to empower the human experience and to hopefully uh, assist you in becoming your authentic self and uh, understand your, your consciousness and your path here during this incarnation, your particular incarnation at this time and space which seems to be becoming more and more important for us to be here at this time in history, I'm noticing. But anyway, so enough of my little anecdote here about my day so far today. Um, anyway, as I was saying about superpower, consciousness as a superpower, do you realize that if, we, if it is true what quantum mechanics says, quantum physics, magic, uh, witchcraft, all of these things <laughs> that talk about uh, our consciousness and what we give our attention to and that we are literally creating our reality with every thought and every moment and every action and everything that we're looking at and feeling. Imagine how powerful we are and we are. That is your superpower. You have the ability to switch focus. And I know I've said this a thousand times, but it, it suits right here. Uh, the goal of the shaman, as it was taught to me, was to be able to master the ability to alter our state of consciousness at will, meaning on the physical plane, having to deal with your physical body, your physical illness, your nourishment, exercise, your well-being physically, focusing on that, and then altering your state of consciousness to focus on your mental, uh, emotional well-being, or your spiritual well-being, or your astral, etheric, infinite well-being. But to have the ability to maneuver through those planes of consciousness is truly uh, the sign of a master shaman and or a magician or whatever label you want to, your consciousness suits, says it suits you. And so with that being said, our consciousness truly is a superpower. And it's not one that is to be taken lightly. We seem to be distracted from our this ability that is innate with us, within us. Uh, it amazes me how many, um, how shall I say, naysayers I get when I talk about how our, our infinite consciousness is is divine and and we have the ability to create our world. That people really want to defend the idea that we're not special. That, we're, that we don't have this infinite capability within our brain that's just wonderful, you know, this wonderful piece of machinery. You know, I, I have, I, I do have to recant something that I did post on one of my videos like five years ago because it, uh, they were right in the comment that I believe I said uh, we only use about 20% of our brain. Well, imagine if we could use the whole thing. Well, well that's not true. Uh, we do use 100% of our brain upon further research over the last several years that we are using our most of our brain uh, most of the time, depending on what aspect you are dealing with, whether it's joy or sadness or creativity or linear logical thinking, different as parts of your brain are going to work differently. So yes, we are using our brain. All of, we have the ability to use all of our brain all of the time. It just depends on your focus and where your consciousness is at at that particular time. Okay, so enough of the intro. Let's get to some of the questions that, that relate to this. And I wanted to put this one first because I felt it was the least, for me, it was not exactly intuitive of how this would relate to consciousness. And the question is, Bernard, why do you feel relationships are important and are they important? And it got me thinking. Relations, I, I, of course, I went into the abstract. And for all of you watching, please, this is just my interpretation and my way of understanding the, in, in, I don't even know what the word is. I can't even say it. The intricacies, intricities of relationships when, it deal, when dealing with consciousness. So there are several things to think about. 
one of the things, the first thing that popped into my mind was my experience when I had my shamanic vision quest of uh, being in that, you know, the, the, the um, cliche ball of light and looking down at the rest, not down, but around at the, at the universe and seeing the connection of how everything is connected, that, that whole, you know, Buddhist joke of, you know, what kind of burger do you want? I want one with everything. Give me one with everything. And I'm one with everything. And to be able to sense that we are one with everything is, for me, one of the most um, uh, uh, obvious ideas of why relationships matter when it comes to consciousness. You know, there's this cliche of the things that we don't like in other people are a reflection uh, perhaps something that we need to work on on ourselves and you know that deals with self de self development on the physical and the emotional and mental uh, planes of consciousness but the reality of it is is that when we are aware of our relationships with one another we are enhancing our awareness of being one with everything the second aspect is yes the emotional and the uh, mental mental health wise aspect of it is that the the stronger our relationships are with the people in our lives the stronger of a foundation that we are going to have to feel uh, more connected and again that goes to the spiritual but let's talk about the emotional feeling more connected within a community developing a community assists us into feeling safer more empowered and not only that but i believe it gives us the courage to be more authentic and that probably comes from a lower vibrational um, perception of okay well if these people love me I must not be that bad of a person however the ends justifies the means if you know that you're loved and you have that love in your life from your family or your friends or whatnot and in, in, in turn you become a more conscious loving being on the planet I say go for it. It's not a crutch if you're drawing strength from it and if that strength is being given to you willingly. So relationships are important and um, I do believe that they are the foundation on the physical and or emotional and mental uh, planes of consciousness when we're dealing with, consci with, with consciousness. I'm repeating myself. The next thing that I want to talk about is how do we expand our consciousness? So a lot of people write me and actually this question was, uh, is it okay to use psychedelics to expand my consciousness was the question. So expanding our consciousness. Do we want to expand our consciousness? Absolutely. Do we, is using psychedelics or mind altering substances the only way to do it? Um, absolutely not. And uh, quite honestly, not that I am proposing for everybody to do it, but if you are under the right, within the right environment, utilizing the right medicine, uh, hopefully you have the correct guide to guide you through something like that so you don't get psychic whiplash like I ended up with back in my 20s. Uh, psychic whiplash is a whole other show. But anyway, uh, it, it's if it's done safely and for the right reasons and within the right environment, I don't feel there's anything negative to that. Now, with that being said, uh, when we utilize the use of psychedelics and or mind-altering substances to expand our consciousness, um, one of my teachers said to me, well, why, why are you taking a helicopter to the top of the mountain? You're missing the whole beauty of taking the, the trail and seeing the nature around you to get to the top. So, it looks at you look at it that way you know if you're doing mind altering substances yeah you're going to get to the top a lot quicker but you're going to miss the journey on the other hand i retorted of course my smart aleck self had to retort but now i know where the path is i was in the helicopter i saw the path and i knew how to get there and that is where i feel these types of uh, ceremonies and or experiences might be helpful in the sense that once you get to the top you know how to get there you don't use a helicopter all the time you don't need to use a helicopter all the time you know how to get there now utilize 
uh, now you can skip through the path because you know where it is. You can get there a lot quicker. So use that as perhaps a mapping. Does that make sense? Psychic mapping of, of how to reach that state of, of heightened awareness and higher consciousness. So at other ways, of course, um, and we do them all the time, and, and I feel that's what I wanted to really uh, point out in today's talk about using our uh, consciousness as a superpower is that without even realizing it, you're altering your state of consciousness and expanding or shrinking, uh, deflating <laughs> um, your consciousness all day long. Uh, altering our state of consciousness is one thing. Expanding our consciousness is another thing. For example, television or now nowadays we can't even say TV. Let's say Netflix, Hulu, and all these streaming programs uh, do alter our state of consciousness. Do I watch Hulu? Yeah, of course I watch Hulu. At the end of the day, I'll watch it for a couple hours to turn my brain off. And I use that as a tool to turn my brain off because it is going all the time. And between meditating and doing this work, I need to unwind without using mind-altering substances. So I'll, I'll use it. I'll watch a show on Hulu. But is it expanding our consciousness or suppressing our consciousness? So I'm just trying to point out that you have the ability to alter your state of consciousness uh, in many different ways. Expanding our consciousness, well, watching and listening to me. I might be confusing some of you, but it's going into your subconscious and maybe in a day, maybe in five minutes, maybe in a few hours, you're going to go, oh, I get it. Ooh, yeah, now I get it. Uh, doing meditation, doing breathing practices, uh, being in service to others is another way of expanding your consciousness. When we are in service to others, A, it brings us back into that state of, I, I want to say humility, but not in the sense that people use that term. Uh, humbleness perhaps might be the word to remind us uh, that there are those who might be suffering in different ways than we are suffering uh, with that being said remember life is suffering we all just suffer a little bit differently uh, everyone has problems and I believe that working in service to others gives us the ability to um, perhaps step out of our problems and notice that there are people with other kinds of problems and that leads to compassion. What does compassion do? It expands your awareness. It expands your consciousness. And we can do this intentionally and that's the point of today's talk. You can intentionally utilize your consciousness as a superpower just by choosing to and using perhaps these tools that I'm offering today. So somebody, again, Bernard, I don't understand what the meaning of my life is. This is a very common question. And I joke around uh, that uh, I went to one of those EST trainings a few years, well, about a decade ago, a landmark forum. I don't know if you all ever been to that. But anyway, uh, they at the end of the forum, they're like, and we're going to tell you the meaning of life. And, you know, $1,000 later, and you know, 18 hours of crying and meditating and all those things later, they say, well, the meaning of life is life has no meaning. And I was like, what? That's it? And it took me a while to get it. For me, that what that statement means is that life, you give life meaning. That life is full of meaning, but we have to be aware of it, to, to give it meaning intentionally. Me coming on here every week for the last, geez, 11 years now, every week, this has meaning for me. Uh, it makes me feel as if I am fulfilling some type of uh, calling that I must do. Uh, this, As you all know, this was nothing I expected. I was the hesitant or whatever. I, I did not, I kind of just wanted to have a a nice little group. I did not know it was going to blow up into what I'm doing today. But um, by doing this, I give my life meaning. Uh, by working at the local diversity center, I'm giving my life meaning. By working with local 
nonprofits as well as international nonprofits on uh, giving my life meaning. By writing my book, I gave my life meaning. Uh, so is there is there one meaning in life? No, there is no one meaning in life. There are, and even within your own life, there can be multiple meanings. Uh, there is not that one moment of, aha, that's why I'm here. Um, you know, yeah, my guide said, you you know, show them how to come back to source. And I talk about this all the time. It's in the book, whatever. But that's just the, the vague definition of what the meaning of my life is. But throughout your life, throughout your day, your life can have a different meaning. So what is the meaning of life? Create the meaning of life. Life is full of meaning. And I'm not one to believe in predestiny. Uh, because I do believe in free will. However, I do believe in karma and the energy and the ripple effect of things coming back to us. So perhaps we are either working through karma if we're going through a difficult time or going through a great time. And coming out the other end of that, we will find, uh, we will find that looking back, the meaning of that moment was to learn something. And I always say that if you're going through a rough time, don't ask yourself, why am I going through this? But what am I supposed to learn through this? And that's my meditation when I get uh, stressed out or depressed or anxious. What am I supposed to learn through from this? What am I supposed to learn from this? And give it meaning. Again, what is the meaning of life? Give it meaning. Give every moment meaning. Our place in the universe. Boy, we really forget that, don't we? What is our place in the universe? The universe is infinite. Uh, there are, what, thousands, millions of galaxies out there. Uh, for all we know, there are probably millions of other planets like Earth. And for we know, if you believe in the uh, multi-dimensional realities uh, like I do, uh, there are infinite dimensions of this particular universe. So, what is our place in the universe? I, I, I try to remind all of us all of the time that we are part of a greater, a greater song. It's a song, the universe. One song, universe. It's one song and we are just the lyrics. We are the grains in the sand. We are the drop in the ocean. I'm going to start singing the goddess chant. But anyway, <laughs> we must remember that our place in the universe is to experience life. Uh, we are merely one facet in the diamond, and our perception is only one of probably trillions and trillions and trillions of different expressions of aspects of our universe. So that's where the humility comes in. That's where the humbleness comes in. Our place in the universe is that we are a piece of the universe. Uh, the world does not revolve around us. The world does not revolve around our family. The world does not revolve around our city. The world does not revolve around our country. The world does not revolve around the earth. The world doesn't revolve around the sun. The world doesn't revolve around the Milky Way. The universe is one song. And to remember that, to, to be in awe of the greatness of all of it and to bring ourselves back to that center uh, of being in awe, you know, that childlike wonder, like, wow. You know, I joke, well, you know, there's that meme that goes around, you know, we're a, a, a skeleton, I don't know, a meat, a meat jacket on a skeleton going through a rock hurtling through space, you know. And it's true. To remember that is, is really a way to bring us back to that place where we realize in all of the chaos, in all of the possible answers to the equation of life, we ended up on this third rock from the sun that actually was able to give life and we were able to have consciousness on this particular, on this particular planet at this particular time and space. That is how we realize that we are. Our consciousness really is a superpower. Where, where else but here on our planet Earth do we have that? I, unless you're, I don't know, Pleiadian or Arcturian or whatnot on another dimensional level of awareness. Anyway, so 
there, uh, somebody asked me, how can you prove consciousness? And actually, that is a, a chapter in my book. I, my book is behind me. I don't know. <laughs> it is a chapter in the book that uh, one of the passages in there speaks about how science can never and will never prove consciousness as fact. Uh, and I shouldn't even say consciousness. Perhaps I think the saying in the book was uh, the divine, that divine spark, that, that super power of our divine awareness. That science can't prove that. You know, we, we see a lot of these uh, metaphysical consciousness type websites posting all these things. Oh, science has discovered consciousness. Science has discovered uh, the divine. Science. But the thing is, is that once you've experienced the divine, once you've uh, had that aha moment and you've been at one and you have that, that awareness of the everything, the moment you start to label it, it's no longer that. It loses its divinity the moment we start labeling it, the moment we start to analyze it, because it's that moment. And actually, the one thing that quantum physics does prove is that energy changes by the perceiver. Uh, we all know about that double, triple split experiment with the balls of light or whatever, and depending on who was looking at it, it was a different outcome. The same thing goes with uh, the divine awareness that, well, I've shared it before, and I'm gonna, I, this will just explain it, and I, I love this, this uh, story of this anecdote. You know, God and Satan are walking down the street, and they're walking down a dark alley, and at the end of the dark alley is this bright, bright white light, and God nudges Satan and says, look, truth, and Satan goes, here, Give it to me, I'll organize it. It's no longer truth. So will consciousness ever be pinned down by science? Will divinity ever be pinned down by science? I don't believe it can be. And if it is, it really is no longer the essence of that truth. Because not only that, the scientists, uh, great example, the Bible. Who wrote the Bible? And they had so many different translations and this and that, and it's supposed to be the truth. But it was dealt, we're dealing with different centuries and different, right? The same thing with scientists. They have egos. They have, uh, you know, habits and ways of thinking that if they're going to see something a certain way, it will be translated in that way. So it can only be experienced. And that's why I laugh when people say, well, the paranormal, well, science has never proved the paranormal to business to be real. But it really can't. I mean, if it does, I'd be a little weary of, of that particular scientist. So you just need to know that that is how amazing our consciousness is. That's how amazing it is. Can it be really, really understood by science? I, I don't think so. Maybe they'll get glimpses and, and maybe get an understanding of it. But, and plus, I worry... Uh, you know, I'm watching a show right now where they're downloading people's consciousnesses and transferring it into other people, and I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> anyway, so mysticism. I, yes, I am involved in mysticism. I am involved in magic, witchcraft, paganism, shamanism, meditation, Buddhism, Taoism. I am as eclectic as they come when it comes to mysticism. I have a doctor of metaphysics um, degree, if that's what you want to call certification. But um, so what is the function of it? I believe, and again, I can only share my experiences, having gone through the different uh, intellectual training and or initiation processes or classes or certifications of all of these different um, Again, uh, I studied shamanism with a shamanic teacher. I studied witchcraft with, uh, with, with a high priest. I've studied high magic with high magicians. I've studied, um, you know, Buddhism with Buddhists, you know, whatever it is. But to me, that is an education of the spirit. Uh, and for me, I believe the more well-rounded our education is, the more we are able to find what works for us because the reality of it is 
Uh, I, and I love the way Ram Das says it. I, I refer to him quite a bit. He was uh, one of the people I listened to a lot when I first started this journey. And he says, don't, don't get stuck on one path because eventually you're going to become so good at that path that you'll have nowhere else to go. It will come to an end. So once you've mastered meditation, where else is there? You know, you've achieved nirvana. Okay, great. Now what? You've achieved a 33rd degree Freemasonry. Now what? You've achieved a high priest of that Wiccan coven. Now what? So never, never get cut off by our disciplines, but to continue to grow. And for me, mysticism provides that knowledge for me. Uh, right now, I'm studying some. I'm going back to studying uh, some of the the Greek uh, mythology. And um, actually, I, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I've gone back to rewatching and studying Joseph Campbell again. I started with Joseph Campbell back in the early '90s and late '80s. I'm back now studying his work again and I'm loving it um, but it just it, there's just so much to learn but remember these are just linear logical facts facts mean nothing if you don't apply them to your practice you must practice so what does this mean in, in all of this how do I turn my consciousness into a superpower one give it a chance know that it is a superpower and two begin stop being a book mystic stop being a social media mystic stop being a youtube mystic and start doing the work uh, that's one of the reasons why a lot of my webcasts and videos on the channel apply putting these principles into use whether it be through meditation or energy work uh, do the meditation do the five minute meditation every day uh, do Reiki healing on yourself or another person every day. Practice mindfulness. Be aware of what you're exposing your senses to every day. Putting it into practice, walking the walk. Talking the talk is not enough. Sometimes talking the talk just confuses things. Put it into practice. Do what you can. And you'd be surprised what happens. Uh, for those of you, and I see a few people on here who have known me a very long time, <laughs> the 20-something Bernard is not the same Bernard of today. Uh, I, have very, I had a lot of struggles in my 20s. And uh, you'll find that, it, gosh, I've had a lot of struggles in the last 10 years, but we all do. But you'll find that, A, it gets easier. You, you, you begin to understand the bigger picture. You begin to align with the solution versus staying in the problem. You begin to understand that these are experiences and that while we have the opportunity and must have an opportunity to heal, to grieve, um, to feel sorry for ourselves sometimes, but we cannot remain in that victim mindset. We gotta work toward the solution mindset. Yes, I've, I've had some horrible things done to me in my life. I'm sure some of you have too. And yes, we have the right to fight to advocate to end some, such injustices against other human beings. But the reality of it is, is that we have to draw our strength from our struggles. And by allowing our, super, our consciousness to be our superpower and to understanding that it is all about perception, it is all about what you're focusing on, and it's all about what you're thinking. It does become that superpower, and our manifestation becomes easier, our life becomes easier, our happiness uh, begins to grow. You know, I used to always say, oh, it's only been six months since I've been depressed. That's good. Or no, I, I remember I used to say, oh, it's only been days since I've been depressed. Then it was like, oh, it's only been six months since I felt depressed. Well, now I'm moving on to... 16 years since I was depressed. So it begin, those good times begin to grow and grow and grow and you can flourish. You begin to flourish. You begin, you begin to want to not only enjoy life, but to help other people enjoy life. That's what we're here for. Messed up stuff. I'm sure you're aware of it. 
and we are here to make the world a better place whether we think it is our purpose I don't want to say it's the meaning of life but I do believe there's a reason why we are all here and we're doing this work during this time in history we have to heal the planet itself we have to heal our fractured psyche as people living on the planet my goodness talk about dysfunctional talk about I mean uh, abused I mean we've been abused you know humanity has been abused we have some major issues to work through and the first step is to know our own power know that we have the ability to focus on what we want to focus on need to focus on and know that we are super we're superheroes <laughs> we are we're all superheroes uh, <clears throat> there's a, uh, a friend of mine who does these like superhero things or Jedi stuff anyway I really like him he's fun to watch but um I can't remember the name of the site. I apologize anyway you're a superhero your consciousness is your superpower and you have the ability to create your awareness through your thoughts and your reality through your thoughts and do practice some of these tools that we talked about alrighty well I've got to get going uh, I want to thank you all for watching again and uh, next week we'll have probably have another consciousness talk <coughs> excuse me I am going to be gone in the middle of September for a few weeks. Uh, remember, if you haven't already and you want to come join me for 10 days at the Visionary Conference at Sea, go to spiritheartcruise.com. I will be speaking on the last day of the conference on the uh, Royal Caribbean Harmony of the Seas. We're going to the Virgin Islands. But before the last day of the cruise, come hang out at the bar with me. Come hang out on the beach with me. Come hang out uh, by the pool with me. We'll talk. We'll have some consciousness. Uh, consciousness talks. Anyway, I love you, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.